Okay, important before we start, so I am assuming you're familiar with what a Chromebook is, what Chrome OS is, and what it can do and can't do compared to, say, a Microsoft Windows laptop. Um, if you're not, do a bit of homework first or ask some questions down below and then come back to the content of this video. Okay, so eight key things to look out for when trying to find the right Chromebook for you before you part with your money. So firstly, check when Google support will expire. So Google are great at regularly updating the security and functionality of Chromebooks, but this is from a set number of years from when that particular model was released, not when you've purchased it. So you don't want to be purchasing toward the end of the roughly eight years of support life they give. Um, the date that the model's update support ends, it's referred to as the AUE, the Auto Update Expiration Date. Um, so watch out for that, but it's really simple to check. So you can find these dates online. Uh, I've put the link down below and I'm just going to take you in and show you the web page now so you can see how easy it is to check. Okay, so here's the page that I've linked to in the video description that you need to visit to check how long you're going to get support for from Google. Uh, it's really simple. Um, so all of the manufacturers of Chromebooks are listed here and you just expand the particular manufacturer of the Chromebook you're looking at and then you find the model. So let's say we're looking at the Acer Spin 311, so I would expand next to Acer and I start to see all the models here and when they've got support until, um, just because I'm lazy, I'm going to do Control and F and type in 311 and you're going to see how important it is here to be really accurate about the particular model you're looking for um, if i just put 311 and looked at this first one i'd think well i'm getting support until 2022 um, scan down and you've got various different dates up to 2026 so be really accurate here with the model you're looking at. I think it's the 311-2H uh, that I'm looking for. And yeah, that's it, the CP311-2H. And I can see I've got support until June 2026. So taking the price I'm gonna pay into mind, I might be happy or not happy with that, but I would say at the moment, um, being in 2021, having you know five years or almost five and a half years of support left, um, pretty decent but do check this basically you don't want to be buying thinking that your Chromebook is going to update forever or thinking that it's going to have quite a few years left of updates when it's about to expire say next year so do check this out now if you're a bit more technically minded uh, happy to play around with your Chromebook a bit more then check out Neverwhere and look at Cloud Ready as I've mentioned so you might be able to put this onto your Chromebook to continue getting updates to Chrome um, it's not guaranteed and as I say you're going to have to be happy to look into this yourself and have a bit of a play around with it if you just want your Chromebook to work out the box and be supported and updated like so many of us do then check that you've got enough years on that AUE before it's going to expire okay so number two form factor so you're going to see Chromebooks all the way from a sort of 10 inch up to a 15.6 inch form factor you need to think about how long you're likely to be sat at it using the keyboard and screen or whether you're going to be plugging in external monitor and peripherals. I mean, this is generic to laptop buying as well. Um, think about the weight of it, how portable you need it to be. I know we're not going out much at the moment, perhaps, but you might be in the future with it. You may not want to be lugging around something too big or heavy, but you might value that extra real estate, with the keyboard and the, the screen. Um, the biggest Chromebooks can offer a full-size keyboard with a number pad. So again, if you're in a lot of spreadsheets all the time, um, that might be of use to you. So worth thinking about that as well. Okay, three, the display. So look for a Chromebook with an IPS screen. Um, this is rather than a TN that you'll see referred to. So you want bright colors and decent viewing angles. An IPS is going to give you that. Um, get a touchscreen model, so most uh, Chromebooks are touchscreen but not all. Um, do check that the one you're looking at is a touchscreen variant and it, it does have that ability. Um, you're going to take advantage of the Android apps in particular that way so it does make a lot of sense. 
Um, so a full HD screen as well, I think at minimum is, is going to be desirable, certainly on a larger model. Um, and you know, don't go below, uh, say, 1366 by 768 pixels on a smaller screen. So just make sure you're getting quality display. You're going to be looking at it for a long time. So it's worth investing in a decent display for your Chromebook. Okay, for USB-C charging, so um, you know you might be used to your Android phones say having USB-C. Check that your Chromebook does as well. So it's really handy for charging. Um, it means that you've got that one standard across your phone and across your Chromebook, and traveling can then be, you know, a lot more uh, pleasant if you're just having to take one charger with you. So do watch out for that. And of course, you can use this for data transfer as well. And quite a few Chromebooks now offer the USB-C on either side. So it doesn't really matter what your desk setup is. If you're running off power, you can plug in either side, which again is a nice handy feature to keep an eye out for. Okay, so number five, RAM. So that's the temporary memory that your Chromebook's gonna use every time you power it on to store whatever you're doing, your browser sessions, your apps, etc. Um, for a moderate user in 2021, I still think four gig of RAM for a Chromebook running Chrome OS, remember it's lightweight, it's not Windows, um, is the sweet spot. Eight gig would be a bonus, and certainly if you're looking to be a kind of power user, I'd be looking to eight gig models, but four gig is, is decent. Um, I guess what I'm saying here, in other words, is do not buy a two gig model, please. Um, don't fall into the trap, as I say, though, of comparing specs required to run Windows against Chrome OS. It's a lot lighter weight and it's less hardware intensive. So if you're unsure, 4 gig of RAM. Okay, so number six, the processor. So this is the brain of your Chromebook. For a moderate user, just please avoid Intel models below N4000. So do not buy anything that starts N3. Um, it's just too old now. It's not gonna be effective and you're probably gonna be overpaying for it. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, you don't have to be uh, technical to do this. Just take the name of the processor that's in the advert you're looking at, Google it and just see when was that processor released and you'll come up with some spec sites that are gonna show you this kind of thing. Um, just see how old it is to get an idea of whether it's a good buy or not in 2021 but certainly anything starting M3, ignore. Okay, two more points left to cover. Thanks if you've stuck with the video so far, we're almost there. Okay, number seven, storage. So Chromebooks aren't about having massive amounts of onboard storage. Um, you're expected to be using Google Drive, working online. So again, it's not like a Windows machine here. So for a moderate user, I think your minimum you need to look out for is 32 gig of onboard storage, but 64 would be welcomed. If you're looking at 128 gig, I think you'd be looking at a more premium pricey machine, um, but 32 gig should be fine. Um, if you do use large media, if you have movies or music you want to keep offline, you can just get a very small flash drive. I'll link to one in the description down below and just plug that into the side of your machine and then have all your videos and music local there or if you have particularly large files that you, for whatever reason, don't want to store online. Um, so there are some ways around the storage constraint if it becomes an issue for you, but in general, you're browsing the web, you're using apps that are talking to you know, servers and storage on the web, and you're using services like Google Drive. So don't be put off by uh, lower amounts of storage space, but you know, avoid anything that says 16 gig. I think 32 gig is your minimum to look out for. Okay, Android apps, number eight, we're there. So it's pretty standard now, but just ensure the Chromebook you're looking at offers support for Android apps from the Google Play Store. So then you can run almost all apps now. There's some that aren't supported, but there's gonna be a lot that you might be familiar with from your Android phone and you know the compatibility is only getting better and better. But what you wanna make sure is that your Chromebook you're looking at supports them. Um, and again, this links back to the point I made earlier about why touchscreen is a no-brainer. So, you know, you do see some Chromebooks that don't have touchscreen but do have Android apps. I think it's a, a bit of an odd match there. Um, so just think about how important this is to you and keep an eye out for it. 
Okay, so what about the actual buying? So it's going to sound obvious, but do your research. So you know what to look for now. Um, so narrow down to a few competing models that you're seriously interested in that tick off the requirements you have. Ensure you found a model uh, you're comparing like for like on. So there will normally be an extra model code, like something referred to like an MPN from the manufacturer to determine the particular spec. It's like when you're buying a car, um, there's going to be various engine sizes of that model. There's going to be various trim levels of that model. It's exactly the same when it comes to Chromebooks. So make sure you're comparing like for like. Um, and then search online to get an idea of prices. You know, on eBay, you can check for um, sold listings. Um, you can use price trackers on Amazon like camelcamelcamel.com. So there's a variety of things you can do there to check. Okay, so where, when, and what condition to buy in? So I think some of the bargains you can have when buying a Chromebook come from the big tech sellers on eBay. Um, and they're often issuing a voucher these days for either 15% off or 20% off. So just watch out on your email for that. Um, often they're selling these as refurbs, but if you get a grade A refurb, that's often just described as a open box. So a customer may have just returned it. You know, they thought they were buying a Windows laptop, got it home, didn't know what it was, sent it back. So you can buy a Chromebook there in as good as new condition, but for you know a, a decent saving. Um, no matter who you buy from, though, check the returns policy and the warranty offered. So just make sure you're covering yourself there if you do go down this route. And as usual, um, check the video description down below for some links that are going to help you here. Um, I'm based in the UK, so a lot of them are UK centric, but you can probably apply the same principle or look for some similar sellers or even the same sellers in your particular region. Okay, so what about an example here? I've got an example here of a Lenovo C340 11, so that's the 11 inch uh, format uh, of this machine. So I think that's a great machine that matches all of the requirements I've taken you through in this video so far. And if you watch the channel, um, please do take a look at the other videos I've got. I've got a video on buying and unboxing a refurb uh, Lenovo C340 11, so do take a look at that. Um, this is the particular model variant, so as I say, very careful to, to get the detail right. Um, and then I've checked off all of the requirements I've taken you through and just given you the detail there. So hopefully you can test my homework and check that that marries up to everything that I've been telling you guys in this video. Um, the start of September 2020, so I am going back a few months, I realise, but we were still in lockdown at this point. Uh, a grade A customer return open box example of this machine um, or selling it yeah it's just under 180 pounds um, when using one of these voucher codes on ebay so i think that's a, a, a real bargain so if you compare at that time it was selling brand new at john lewis for 280 you know, basically 100 pound more um, and it was out of stock as well so you can appreciate here i think this was a, a great example of how you can get a bargain um, I do realise it is becoming even tougher as we start to go into 2021, um, so prices naturally may be a bit higher than this now, but this just gives you a real life example. Okay, so thanks so much for watching. Please do see the video description for all those links. Please drop your questions down below in the comments. If you found it useful, please do give a thumbs up to like the video, and if you're new here, a subscribe would be amazing. Cheers, guys.